like what you see here? Then be sure to subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7, an all new channel focusing on the history of Major League Baseball. Click the card in the upper right corner or the link in the description to subscribe now. And now, on with our feature presentation. The Hawaii Bowl is, when you think about it, one of the strangest bowl games on the entire calendar. Heck, it might be the strangest scheme from a logistical standpoint, when you think about it. On one hand, if you're a player, you absolutely love it. I mean, you get to play a game in Hawaii. You get to escape the cold and harsh winter. And you get to not only play a game in Hawaii, but you get to participate in a ton of activities down there as well. On the other hand, if you're anyone else, and your name is not the University of Hawaii, you absolutely hate it. The payout for the Hawaii Bowl is relatively small compared to other bowls, so it's not like if you're an athletic department, you're making bank on this. If anything, you're losing money, because the flights and the hotels and all the expenses needed to go to Hawaii, especially if you're flying across the country, are really high. Plus, good luck getting fans to come to Hawaii. Good luck if you announce the bowl game at the start of December, about three weeks before it's going to be played, to get fans to book expensive flights and hotels all the way out there, take off of work, and miss Christmas at home with their family, or change whatever their plans are. There's a reason why the attendance for the Hawaii Bowl is respectable whenever Hawaii plays in this game, and is, for the most part, laughably bad when they do not. If I'm a Boston College fan, and my team is playing in the Pinstripe Bowl, okay, I can make the three-hour drive down to New York for the day and watch the game and root for my team. If I'm a Boston College fan, and my team is playing in Hawaii, yeah, I'm not spending thousands of dollars on skipping Christmas and taking a whole week off of work to make that trip. So why do I bring this up? Because this team right here is the 2002 Tulane Green Wave. They had the same problem that just about every single non-Hawaii or non-West Coast-based team has when they are invited to the Hawaii Bowl, or any bowl game in Hawaii for that matter. And they decided to address the problem and go about it in what might just be, considering the circumstances, the dumbest and stupidest way possible. Seriously, this is one of those things where I have no idea what Tulane's athletic department was thinking or what genius came up with this idea. But when you think about it for more than five seconds, it makes about as much sense as attaching a singular balloon to a car and expecting it to fly. Because this is the story behind one of the dumbest business plans in Tulane history. Before I talk about the actual incident in question, we need some context to understand how Tulane even got to this point. Mainly, what they did in order to go bowling in the first place. The year is 2002, and after a few rough seasons, Tulane had their best season in years. Over the past three seasons, following their 1998 season where they went undefeated straight out of nowhere and finished as the number seven ranked team in the country, they failed to make a bowl game, failed to have a winning record in Conference USA play, going 5-15 in that stretch, and were a below 500 team, going just 12-22 winning just 35% of their games. However, in 2002, all of that changed, and Tulane had, notwithstanding their historic 1998 season, their best season in years. Not only did they finish the regular season with a 7-5 record, but it marked just the third time in the last 20 years that they had a season with at least 7 wins. This was also good enough to make it to their second bowl game in the last 15 years. But more on that later. And there were quite a few reasons why Tulane was a successful team, or at the very least, more successful than they had been since the turn of the millennium. You had the strong play of eventual first-round pick J.P. Lossman, who led Conference USA by completing over 57% of his passes, becoming just the second quarterback in school history, alongside Sean King in 1998, to lead the conference in this category. You had the incredible running of Moelle Day Moore, who had over 1,100 rushing yards on the ground and over 1,600 yards from scrimmage, as he followed up his 2001 season where he led the entire conference and NCAA in yards from scrimmage with a 2002 campaign where he was second in the conference in this category. And you had a great defense that not only finished the season allowing 21.7 points per game, 
which was third in the conference, but came to play in the second half of the season and peaked at just the right time. As over their final seven regular season games, the Green Wave allowed just 15.8 points per game. This was one of the best non-power conference defenses in the nation by the end of the year, especially in the secondary where defensive Aquinaris L. Page recorded eight interceptions, which was the best total in Conference USA and the second best total in the entire NCAA, only behind Jim Leonard of Wisconsin. And due to their success and their strong ending to the season, where they won five of their final seven regular season games, they got invited to a bowl game, getting invited to the inaugural Hawaii Bowl, where they would play the University of Hawaii. There had been bowl games played in Hawaii before, such as the Aloha Bowl and the Oahu Bowl, and you can learn more about that by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But this was the first bowl ever under this branding, which is still around today. And Tulane could not be more thrilled to accept the invite as a reward for their great season. As their head coach said, We're excited to be playing in the bowl. I know our players and coaches understand how important this scheme is and what a tremendous challenge it will be for a football team. Star quarterback J.P. Walsman said, I always wanted to go to Hawaii as a kid. I think everybody on the team wants to travel. And Rick Dixon, the athletic director for Tulane, was perhaps the most overjoyed of them all, saying on this invite, they will see a part of the world most of them have never seen with a different culture and a different way of life. Plus, we have the opportunity to play in front of our fans across the country before a national television audience on Christmas Day. I'm looking forward to teaching the whole team how to body surf. However, there is one small problem when a team like Tulane gets invited to a bowl game out in Hawaii. And there's a problem when a team has to make a 4,200 mile trip to play a game on Christmas Day. You're not going to get a whole lot of fans to make the trip with you. And it's not as though Tulane has a large alumni base in Hawaii that can help you out. As part of the contract that a conference USA signed with the Hawaii Bowl, whatever school participated in the game had to buy up 10,000 tickets at a minimum. You could always buy more if there was demand, but you had to buy 10,000 tickets at face value, no matter what. And if you couldn't sell the tickets, you had to pay that money back to the bowl game. This is one of the double-edged swords with playing the Hawaii Bowl if you're not Hawaii or you're not a West Coast team with a strong alumni base on the island. While you're getting some sort of payout for playing in the game, when you add up all the expenses, including the mandatory buying of the tickets, you're going to come out in the red in all likelihood. And for Tulane, this wasn't good, especially because their athletic department was already bleeding money, to the point where Tulane was seriously considering cutting football after the season. The goal for Tulane was to lose $2 million in athletics, which just about every athletic department loses money, but it's worth it since it attracts students to come to the school and it could be a great indirect recruiting tool. There's nothing unusual or bizarre about that. That's just the way that finances go in college athletics. The problem was that the athletic department, as things stood, was losing over $7 million per year. Basically, Tulane was in serious financial trouble as things were, and the Hawaii Bowl, especially because of this ticket allotment that they had to buy, wasn't helping matters at all. And it was even worse when only 500 fans bought tickets to the game. Of the 10,000 tickets that Tulane had to buy up for this game, they were only able to sell 5% of that. Just 500 fans either lived on the island and were willing to go to the game, or lived somewhere else in the country and were able to make this trip on Christmas to the game. This meant, if you do the math, that Tulane had 9,500 tickets that they had to sell or give back to the Hawaii Bowl which would mean a loss of roughly $350,000. Which is why Tulane had an idea to try and mitigate the damages. And folks, this might be one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. Because, have you ever wanted to buy a ticket to a game that you had no intention of going to, but pay face value to do it? Well, here's your chance. Seriously, Tulane's athletic director, Rick Dixon, came up with the absolutely dumb idea to not just sell the remaining 9,500 tickets of the game, but to do it as a commemorative souvenir at face value. So 40 bucks, 
or over 66 bucks in today's money. Now, it would be one thing if Dixon decided to sell these tickets for 10 bucks or so, eat the loss on the other 30 bucks, and fans could purchase it as a cheap gift and a memento of the season that Tulane had. But nope, because Dixon's brilliant plan was to try and get fans to buy tickets to a game at full price that they could not go to. As Dixon said, this is a great way for fans to be a part of the Waves Bowl trip this year, even if they can't make it to Hawaii. Our team has had a great season, and this bowl ticket will be an excellent remembrance of that. Is it though? Is it really? Is it a great way for fans to do this? Because let's think about this for five seconds here. Number one, what was stopping fans from doing this anyways? What was stopping fans from buying the tickets at 40 bucks and then not going to the game? You offer quite literally nothing new. It's not like you made the tickets five bucks or 10 bucks or heck, even 20 bucks. You didn't package it with a future game. You didn't tie it into something else. You kept them at the same price so any fan that would have wanted to buy a ticket to use as a memento would have done so already. Imagine if you were a company selling a product and you were having trouble selling that product. So for your next move, you announce that you can buy that product at the exact same price that it was before. Genius strategy. Number two, let's think about the market for a second. As it was, Tulane was having trouble getting fans to come to their games, even with ticket prices dirt cheap. You know what 40 bucks got you during the 2002 season? At one point in 2002, Tulane was having so much trouble that for 40 bucks, you could not only get a ticket to Tulane's game against Navy, but to their game against Army and a pass to the D-Day Museum in downtown New Orleans. For 40 bucks, you got two games and a museum pass. And you couldn't even get people to take advantage of that offer. As for the Army game, held at the Superdome, which holds over 73,000 people, you sold just 19,421 tickets, making it, of Tulane's seven home games that season, their second smallest attendance of the year. So let's think about that. People weren't biting on the $40 deal for two tickets to games that they can actually watch and a pass to a historic museum. And now, you're asking them to pay 40 bucks for a game they can't even go to? I'm sorry, what? What kind of business model is that? It's like if I charge people 10 bucks for two slices of pizza and a drink. I'm having trouble getting people to buy my pizza. So as a way to make some money, I now decide to offer an invisible pizza option for 10 bucks, where you're essentially paying 10 bucks for a picture of the pizza that you obviously cannot eat or enjoy. Think that sounds stupid? Well, that's what Tulane did here, and it's no surprise that this backfired rather spectacularly, and no one was biting on this offer, especially when you consider that with inflation, this was $66. 66 whole American dollars for this. Come on. Again, there were definitely ways that you could have done this and made it work. Sell a commemorative ticket for 40 bucks, but that also gives them a ticket to a future home game for the 2003 season, or a piece of merchandise. Sell the ticket for less than face value. Give them away to students, and hope that a couple of them convince their parents to do a trip to Hawaii, or do an impulse buy when they're drunk at 2 a.m. Quite literally, anything would have been better than what Tulane proposed here. That's how bad this idea was. And even though Tulane ended up winning what was a very good game, as they won 36-28 to win just their fourth bowl game since the program became established in 1893 over a century ago, the talk for those in the loop was about just how stupid and moronic they acted when they tried to sell the tickets. Because whatever you think good value is, Tulane was offering the exact opposite. As when it came to their financials, the Green Wave saw anything but green. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com. And be sure to like and subscribe, as it really helps the channel out a lot. Join me every Wednesday night where we'll play NFL trivia for cash prizes at 9pm Eastern over on Twitch. To learn more about the history of the NFL, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 9. To learn more about the history of Major League Baseball, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 7. 
Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.